United, we are still sheltering in place. Even though there's a lot of conversation about when we will be reopening today and next Sunday and the Sunday after, we are still sheltering in place. I just wanna welcome you to United Church of Hyde Park. Yesterday, I got a, a picture well, let me say this. A lot of times when you go on Facebook, they will give you memories from years ago. And it's like really such a nice gesture because it's like sometimes we're always so busy moving forward. We uh, don't remember as well the past. And so I thought about that memory because it was just such a beautiful memory. Um, but even as we are at home, and being forced to kind of be isolated, I wanna invite you all to remember, to remember our journey together, to remember each other, to remember the memories that seal us together, to remember this journey we are on, to remember that it is our faith, our faith community that brings us together. And what wonderful memories those are even though I've been at United a lot shorter than some of you, still such powerful memories already. So I welcome you to United. And while you are staying in place, please, please, please welcome those memories of who we are as United until we can be together again physically. A memorial litany in the rising of the sun and its going down, we remember them. In the blowing of the wind and the chill of winter, we remember them. In the opening of the buds and the rebirth of spring, we remember them. In the blueness of the sky and in the warmth of summer, we remember them. In the rustling of leaves and in the beauty of autumn, we remember them. In the beginning of the year and when it ends, we remember them. When we are weary and in need of strength, we remember them. When we are lost and sick at heart, we remember them. When we have joys we yearn to share, we remember them. So as long as we live, they too shall live. They are now a part of us and we remember them. The reading today comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verses one through three. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. 
believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself so that where I am, there you may also be. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of God's word. Trust in God. Trust also in me, Jesus says to his disciples. The New Testament word in Greek can be translated into English two different ways, to believe or to trust. Many of us may have learned this passage from John as believe in God, believe also in me. But for me, there's a big difference between believing and trusting. To believe something is to know it, mostly in our head. I believe what I've seen or experienced or what I've been taught. Beliefs are important because they provide direction for us. I believe in gravity, so I don't recklessly jump off high places. And I believe in gravity because I've also experienced it. Likewise with the beliefs of our faith. Belief is expressed in our creed, such as the Apostles' Creed. I have been taught these beliefs and they impact my faith and therefore I hope my way of living. We often equate our faith with belief almost exclusively. I believe, so I have faith. But let's admit it. Some days it's easier to believe than others, in God, in resurrection's hope, and in the goodness of others. We all find ourselves having at least a few moments, often during the night, fearful and worried. When it's difficult to believe, then we wonder if we have faith. It's like the poem found written on the wall of the World War II concentration camp by a Jewish, Jewish pr prisoner. It's entitled, I Believe. It says, I believe in the sun even when it isn't shining. I believe in love even when there's no one there. But I believe in God even when he's silent. I believe through any trial there is always a way. Then the song shifts from belief to trust. May there someday be sunshine. May there someday be goodness. May there someday be love. May there someday be peace. Trust isn't just about what I think or know. It's what I count on, stake my claim on, even my life on. If belief is in our head and thinking, then trust is in our heart, maybe deep in our bones. Trust is an important component of our faith. Maybe the difference between belief and trust can be described like this. Rabbi Emeritus, teacher and scholar Lawrence Kushner tells how he was working with a group of Jewish junior high school kids. He asked them if they believed in God, and he was hoping, as a good teacher, that some would say yes, maybe some would say no, and it would create a very dynamic discussion. But no one said they believed in God, not one. Kushner was devastated. He remembers thinking, so it's come to this. 3,000 years of piety and struggle and agony for a bunch of suburban kids that don't believe in God. And then later on in the discussion, he inadvertently asked them, how many of you have ever felt close to God? Every kid raised a hand. Somehow being close to God, that resonated with them. Close to God at Shabbat when the mother lit the candles or being outside in nature or some other profound experience, that was more real to them than believing in God. Believing in one's mind can sometimes come and go, or sometimes it just takes a long time to develop. But they felt close to God, that's what they wanted. And I suggest that's what trust is, trusting that God is there no matter what the mind thinks on in any given day. The opposite of trust isn't distrust, but anxiety and worry. 
And that's why I like trust in God, trust in me as Jesus spoke to his disciples. That too was a time of great anxiety and worry. As I've pondered before, after 9-11, people rushed back to the church, but then it all dropped off. Was it that we didn't focus enough on developing trust in God and went back to making sure people believed all the right things? Maybe trust comes first and belief later. When your world is turned upside down, all the things you thought you believed in, like skyscrapers should stay in the sky, or now, all the things that we suddenly have in our lives that are overturned, plans of all kind, not being free to come and go as we please. This isn't life as we have known it, as we believed it to be. It's all upside down in what we thought we knew and believed about our lives. Belief just doesn't get you through the night. But trust can. When I wake up in the middle of the night and try to go back to sleep, I'll tell you, I don't recite the Apostles' Creed. I slowly say the 23rd Psalm. Now that's a trust builder. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. A parent doesn't sing the ABC song as a lullaby. That's a song that teaches, but it doesn't strengthen trust and assurance. We need songs, psalms, and messages of trust and assurance in our lives right now to strengthen our faith, to get us through. In one of the churches I served for many years, we sang an anthem a lot, especially at critical times. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my savior. We began singing it during Desert Storm. There was one woman who had a number of family members deployed into the war effort. We were all afraid for them. We prayed for them every week and we frequently sang this song. Now you have to understand, she and I didn't always see eye to eye, meaning we didn't always believe the same way about things. So she would tell people that I worried more about her family than she did meaning she was trusting in God more than me, that she had more faith than I did. Well, maybe so. Many of the people in the church believed very differently from her about the war, but they sang the song as a prayer, seeking to trust in God for themselves as well as for her. While people didn't see eye to eye on some things during that time, and she was often the outlier in the community, she relied on the strength and support that only a community of faith can give and that is unattainable on our own. As is often the case, our differing beliefs caused animosity at times. But when we sang together, like surely it is God who saves me, I will trust in him and not be afraid. We were as one. The passage from John says, whoever trusts in Jesus will do the work that he does. And I think love for one another is one of the works that Jesus would have us to do. Trust requires community. That's why church, we can do this. We can get through together, staying strong and supporting each other whenever there's a need. When one flags in faith, we could stay together strong. Surely it is God who saves us. Trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is our stronghold and our sure defense, and he will be our savior. God bless you.
Let us pray for this offering. Loving God, you pour out your grace upon us without reservation. Help us to be as gracious and generous with our gifts and resources so others might know you, might know your hope, might know your healing, might know your presence in their lives. This we ask in the mighty name of Jesus, amen. <laughs> 